One of my clients, a physician, when discussing insurance, said to me, we're all just one step away from the banana peel. She would know better than most. While it's not particularly pleasant to think about becoming sick or needing assistance, healthcare and long-term care costs pose very real risks to your retirement nest egg. Can you afford to chance it? Risk management is the foundation of a solid financial plan, especially in retirement. From my unique vantage point as a financial advisor to thousands of near retirees, and as a financial radio talk show host, it's apparent, to me at least, that the biggest holes in your retirement puzzle is most likely managing the risk of staggering health care costs. The most important items to plan and budget for are private health insurance if you are under age 65, Medicare and Medicare supplement insurance if you are near or over age 65, and a solid long-term care policy. Before you turn in the keys to your office for good, you're going to want to look into employer-sponsored health coverage. Now we're talking about if you're under age 65 when you retire, which would be available to you potentially as a retiree. Keep in mind that private sector employers aren't required to offer retiree health benefits, but some of the larger employers do. Furthermore, if your company provides a plan, nothing in the law prevents them from cutting or eliminating those benefits. Make sure you read the plan carefully and compare the costs with the benefits offered. If your employer doesn't offer retiree health care benefits and you're under the age of 65, then you'll need to turn to the non-group market for health insurance coverage. Uh, unfortunately, the individual market can be an intricate place to navigate in search of a well-suited plan. If you have to purchase an individual plan, you may find that the premiums can be prohibitively expensive, particularly if you have had a history of medical issues. I have clients under age 65 who have the assets to retire, but who choose to remain employed just for the health care coverage. Make sure you know the costs and that you can get coverage before you leave your employer's plan. Given the cost of private insurance, it's important that you know what you need and what you don't. Generally, there is a direct trade-off between the cost of health insurance and the level of protection it provides. As you weigh that trade-off, keep this in mind. You buy health insurance in case you get sick, really sick, not in case you stay healthy. Now, if you're retiring near or over age 65, Medicare and Medicare supplement insurance will be your primary focus when it comes to health care. And although Medicare acts as a safety net and as the insurer, the, you know, the primary insurer for most retirees, you're probably still going to need some something, either a retiree benefit or an additional coverage to supplement Medicare. Medicare Part A is automatically available to you at age 65 if you're taking Social Security. If you're not taking Social Security, then you'll need to actively enroll. You can enroll in Medicare up to three months before the month you turn age 65. Part A, which covers inpatient hospital expenses, is premium free. It's not free. You've paid for it if you've worked 40 quarters and paid Medicare taxes. If you haven't worked 40 quarters, then you'll have to pay a premium based on the number of years that you have worked in Medicare covered employment. Medicare Part B, which covers outpatient medical services and is subject to an annual deductible, is available for an additional premium. The premium is based on your household income and it's either deducted from your Social Security check or billed to you quarterly if you're not yet receiving Social Security benefits. It's usually best to enroll in Part B at the same time that you apply for Part A. However, you don't have to. You may opt out of Part B coverage. For example, if you have a group health plan uh, through your pr prior employer, and, but, and then you would opt in later during various enrollment periods. But keep in mind that you may incur a penalty for waiting. 
Now, for more information on Medicare Part A or B, either the provisions or enrollment guidelines, believe it or not, Medicare.gov has a really good website. So I'd encourage you to visit there. They have a lot of documents and information that you can download. In order to purchase Medicare Supplement Insurance, which is also known as Medigap, you must be enrolled in both Medicare Part A and Part B. Beginning June 1, 2010, which is when the Modernization Act kicks in, there are 10 plans available. Depending on which Medigap plan you choose, you will get coverage for additional expenses that Medicare doesn't cover, hence the name Medigap. Medigap plans range from skinny to well-rounded, and the premiums will vary based on the level of coverage that you select. When selecting a Medigap plan, it's important to look at your ability to pay for out-of-pocket expenses along with your coverage needs. And I would highly recommend that you get with a good financial advisor to help you with this analysis. Once you have a health care solution that fits in your budget and meets your needs, there is one other critically important piece of coverage to consider. Long-term care insurance. Consider these statistics. Americans are living longer than ever before. Those surviving to age 65 can expect to live an average of 19 more years. By 2030, the number of Americans age 65 and older will more than double to 71 million older Americans, comprising roughly 20% of the U.S. population. And by the way, before I go on to the next statistic, I wanted you to just think about something. Most of those people will not have long-term care coverage. Who do you think is going to get the benefits and the best, the best care um, when all of those people are competing for all of the free or subsidized services, okay? Just something to think about. That's a lot of competition for services. Not when you have private insurance, though. I promise you, you will get the care that you need. Some more statistics for you. One in three Americans age 65 will need some kind of nursing home care in their lifetime. And just in the past two years alone, the increase in the average cost of long-term care ranged anywhere from 5 to 13 percent depending on the type of service. The average cost of just two to three years of long-term care could potentially exhaust the assets of many elderly Americans. Private insurance and Medicare cover very little of the necessary costs. And Medicaid will provide coverage only after you've spent down your assets to your last $2,000 if you don't have a long-term care policy. Long-term care insurance provides so much more than just the costs associated with, with illness and old age. I'll tell you what it gives you. It gives you dignity of choice in your care, as well as peace of mind for your family and those responsible for overseeing your quality of life. If you are over the age of 40 and have less than three and a half million in assets, it is time to look into a long-term care policy. Often, in my experience, retirees have cash value life insurance policies that they bought when they were much younger that they no longer need. That may be a good way to fund your health care costs, both your Medigap and your long-term care premiums. Don't risk your lifetime of hard work and savings. Make sure you are properly insured in retirement and protected against rising health care costs and the need for long-term care. You just simply can't afford the alternative. 